Hey guys, let's take a look at the care plan for syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone or SIADH. So in this lesson, we'll briefly take a look at the pathophysiology and etiology of SIADH. We'll also look at subjective and objective data, as well as nursing interventions and rationales included in the care plan. Okay, so SIADH is actually is diagnosed as a collection of symptoms that take place with otherwise normal function. This syndrome is characterized by hyponatremia, concentration of urine and dilution of blood. The patient, they have an adequate amount of blood, which is more dilute than normal. SIADH causes the body to retain fluid, resulting in decreased electrolyte imbalance. SIADH is an effect of other disorders, often nervous system disorders like epilepsy or Guillain-Barre syndrome or head trauma or cancers of the brain, GI, genitourinary, and pulmonary systems. It is caused when the hypothalamus is stimulated to produce excess amounts of AVP or arginine vasopressin, which is an antidiuretic hormone that triggers the kidneys to retain fluid in the tubules and excrete sodium. As the amount of fluid builds up in the cells and tissues, it creates an imbalance of electrolytes, specifically sodium causing hyponatremia. The excess fluid dilutes the blood instead of being excreted, causing the urine to become concentrated. The desired outcome would be for the patient to maintain normal electrolyte and fluid balance. So let's take a look at some of the subjective and objective data that your patient with SIADH may present with. Now remember, subjective data, these are going to be things that are based on your patient's opinions or feelings, like nausea, muscle cramps, depression or irritability, and fatigue. Objective and measurable data might include vomiting, hypothermia, tremors, confusion, seizures, coma, edema, and signs of volume overload. Let's take a look at nursing interventions included in the care plan, monitor intake and output, and monitor daily weights. Patients, they may be on fluid restrictions to help balance intake and output, which should be calculated along with daily weights at the same time time on the same scale, that's super important, every day. Be sure to monitor your patient's EKG continuously as changes in electrolyte balance can disrupt the electrical conduction of the heart, causing dysrhythmias. Fluid shifts can occur quickly, causing changes in blood pressure, and heart rate, which is why it is critical to assess and monitor your patient's vital signs every one to two hours. Most often, patients with SIADH will experience hypotension. Excess fluid volume can settle in and around the lungs and the heart, so be sure to monitor for signs of congestion and difficulty breathing. SIADH can also be triggered by pneumonia, so monitor for this underlying cause as well. Medications and supplements are carefully given to avoid overloading too quickly. Supplements like potassium may be given to regulate electrolyte imbalances. Demeclocycline or lithium may be given to stop the kidneys from responding to extra ADH. Finally, hyponatremia, this is a hallmark sign of SIADH, so be sure to monitor lab values like serum, sodium, potassium, chloride, serum concentration or osmolality, and urine specific gravity. Okay, guys, here is a look at the completed care plan for SIADH. 
Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.